Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Plans shift into high gear as St. Lucia prepares to host the inaugural Royal St. Lucia Turfs Club's Piton Cup. A community-based project reaps success in the Castries Basin. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations hosts the 2019 Annual Career and College Fair. All that was the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Preparations are in full swing as St. Lucia prepares to host the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club's Peter Cup on December 13, National Day. Already, the venues and amenities are being prepared to ensure that the event is a success. Janelle Norville has more. Five thoroughbred races are expected to be held on the 13th December 2019 when St. Lucia makes its official debut into the equine industry. The Peter Cup will be the highlight of the event. However, four other races will be held, including the Viewfort Dash, the Helen of the West Indies Race, the National Day Sprint, and the Winston Tree Memorial Trophy. The Winston Tree Memorial Trophy has a cash prize of $40,000 US and will be held in honor of the late Winston Trim, owner of Trim's riding stables. Director of the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club and Vice President of the Desert Star Holdings, Eden Harrington, indicated that immense effort will be put into not only marketing the races, but growing them on an international level. The CCF, or Caribbean Equine Cultural Festival, will be the region's first luxury, lifestyle and racing event. It will commence on Thursday the 12th of December with an investment event and a welcome party before moving to its primary focus on National Day with the CECF Race Day. Spearheading this occasion will be the USD $150,000 Pitons Cup, a feature race that will be the richest run in the Caribbean this year. The appeal of the Pitons Cup, ladies and gentlemen, is generating immense and favourable publicity for St Lucians and for St Lucia since it was announced just over a month ago. Additionally, it has secured the participation of, of some of international horse racing's leading lights. The director congratulated the individuals who recently graduated from the internationally accredited Groom Elite Program Inc. out of Stanford, Kentucky. Harrington explained that the program will be expanded so as to offer training in a variety of areas. Ladies and gentlemen, the Winston Trim Training Program is an ongoing initiative. It is not a one-off exercise. It is named after the late Winston Trim, who was instrumental in bringing horse racing to this nation. This initiative has been approved by the Government of St Lucia, and it is supported by the Royal St Lucia Turf Club, by its affiliate, the China Horse Club, and by international business partners. For local corporations or individuals who wish to lend their support, please note that 100% of financial contributions that are gifted to this initiative are directed to this initiative and to programs here. There will be a variety of different programs run to equip St Lucians with skill sets to fill new jobs that will be created by this industry. We welcome your support. Highlighting the many developmental projects taking place in the south of the island, Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Shastner explained that the necessary infrastructure is being upgraded to accommodate the growth. So if you're going into the airport, you'll see there's a building being lived, built on the left-hand side. That's a free base operation. That is for private planes. <clears throat> and we've been working in sync <clears throat> sorry, with them to have it open for December 13th. So a lot of the people who are going to be coming in are going to be flying in their own private jets. And then last but not least, I hopefully I didn't have to, to say that, but certainly um, with what's taking place at St. Jude's and also now taking place at Hunor International Airport, um, these are substantial infrastructural upgrades to view for. So the expansion that we're seeing, the capacity absolutely will be here to be able to absorb that. Um, the grace intake, I think that the bids have gone out, we're waiting and going out. So we're going to now be producing four and a half million gallons of water a day. We've expanded the water capacity and, and, and facilities in the Miku area. So again, even prior to these investments coming in, the infrastructure is really ahead of the game. All St. Lucians are urged to take advantage of the available opportunities with the introduction of the new sector. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville.
A community-based project is reaping success in the Castries Basin. The Synergy Project sought a successful completion of its Technical Careers Program. The program was facilitated by the Department of Continuing Studies at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. The Synergy Project was officially launched in June of 2018 with the aim of providing the people of Castries Central with self-development and training programs and assistance with finding suitable and rewarding employment. With the help of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, the project has been able to develop a technical careers program where participants can learn auto mechanics, plumbing and general maintenance. According to the Vice Principal of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, the program will improve their opportunity for employment. Entry into the program required basic literacy and numeracy competency. However, there was no prior experience or qualification needed in the specialization chosen. The TCP content sought to strengthen basic numeracy and literacy competence by providing more exposure to foundational mathematics and English and communication skills and to provide participants with the necessary knowledge and skills in their chosen areas of specialization. The program was expected to run over a period of 14 weeks, with classes being conducted on Saturdays. A TCP day would range from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., depending on the specialization being followed. Conceptualized by the Parliamentary Representative for Castries Central, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobre, the Synergy Project is tailored to the needs of the constituents. Honorable Flood Bobra is particularly grateful for the support from the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. We conceptualized 15 programs and train tech was not the first one that we conceptualized. But it seemed to have been the one that has, uh, is most advanced, to put it that way. And it has to be because of the support of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. And I have to say to you, uh, Mrs. St. Clair and uh, Mr. McCormick Combi, that Sir Arthur Lewis has exemplified by the way to welcome our idea is true community spirit. You are truly a community college. Because the moment we explained what we wanted to do, the Sir Arthur was waiting for us to do this. And it was like a hand in a glove. The project manager, Nadine Kodra Shababtiste, was indeed proud of the bold steps that the graduates made towards their personal development. Today is a milestone. It tells you how far you've come. Keep learning, keep trying, keep accomplishing, and keep venturing on through your journey. It's called from Elephant on the Road of Home. But that is really a powerful saying, and as I say to you guys, this is just the beginning. It is a, it is a, a marker along life's journey. It is a point to look back, and it's also a point to look forward. So as you commemorate this day as a, such a very important day in your lives, know that your accomplishment here is just a testament to the great thing that you can accomplish. Andrew St. Romain was one of the graduates of the course. He shared his emotional story. I've been a drug addict for 16 years. Smoke cocaine and touching people thing everywhere. Today, I'm a proud married man. Amen. The program ran for 14 weeks. As the Eastern Caribbean Collective Organization for Music Rights Echo gets set to introduce what is being referred to as related rights, the organization is taking steps to ensure that individuals appreciate its introduction. The organization has organized a week of activities, including a panel discussion which was held on Tuesday, October 22. The discussion was held under the theme, Introducing Related Rights to St. Lucia and the Rest of the OECS Region, the Benefits, the Obstacles, Our Readiness. Intellectual property lawyer Tadia Antoine explains what exactly related rights entails. Copyright really is an exclusive right granted to creators of work. 
yes. um, the ability to reproduce those works. So you, you create a work and you granted um, in law the right to license, reproduce the work for a fee, or what sometimes we call royalty. It could be a license fee itself. Uh, the related rights don't quite fall on the, it's a type of copyright, but it's not quite copyright. So what it, it extends the regime of, of copyright. So you have related right to your author's rights. So the authors are, are the actual creators, um, but the, the other rights that, that stem from, from it as well, uh, which we somewhat call related rights. So for example, um, K.O. being a performer, K.O. may not have written the song. So the song is written um, by Miss Francis as, as the author, so she has author rights. But he's a performer of the song, and right. he, he performs the song in such a way which, which people quite like his antics mm -hmm. on the stage. Chairperson of Echo St. Kitts and Nevis, Vernaldorin Francis, says if the organization decides to focus on related rights, the opportunities for collaboration will be even greater. Right now, um, Echo is only administering to authors, which is the composers and songwriters, right? So it actually creates an avenue, it creates an opportunity for more individuals to make more. Um, the persons on percussions, um, you know, everyone involved, ev everyone in, the involved in the process, exactly. Yeah. And right. mm -hmm. Exactly. Mechanical so right. it, 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 it um, I would say it promotes networking, it promotes having, you know, better relationships with the persons who are actually involved in creating that work. St. Lucia's youth are now better prepared at making a more informed decision about their career choices. This as the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations hosts the 2019 Career and College Fair. The annual Career and College Fair provides parents and students with the opportunity to interact with representatives of various local, regional and international institutions, as well as obtain information that will assist them in making informed decisions about furthering their education. Present at this year's event was the Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, who congratulated the students for making the decision to be a part of the fair. Moreover, she impressed on those present to remember that with the advent of regional integration, there is a greater need for St. Lucians to gain an even stellar education. Any job opportunity available in St. Lucia is not limited to only the persons who hold a St. Lucian birth certificate or passport. It also means when benevolent governments Development agencies and international banks undertake projects in St. Lucia, that the job opportunities that arise from these projects are not limited to only persons who hold a St. Lucian birth certificate or passport, which therefore translates into that you are being pitted against other international citizens. And therefore, you ought to receive an education that forever places you head and shoulders above any other global citizen, or at least you can square shoulders with them. The Career and College Fair also creates an awareness of the various career paths and the skills and qualifications needed for certain professions. Chief Education Officer Fiona Meyer reminded the students to have an open mind as career paths can change. All of the statistics is pointing to the fact that the professions are going to change. You may start off wanting to do training, developing skills in a particular area, but as things happen, you have to keep upskilling yourself. You have to keep an open mind and saying, okay, you may be a physician, but you need customer service. Who wants to come to a doctor who can't speak to his or her patient and have good bedside manner? So, in as much as you get a medical degree, you may have to go back and do a business degree. The annual career and college fair was held from October 23 to 24, 2019. And this is the NTN Nightly. Do stay with us. Do you know me? I've been forced to do this by my trafficker. I was promised a better life, but got forced into domestic servitude. I can be any age. I can be any gender. 
any ethnicity. I am. I am. I am a victim of trafficking in persons. Know the signs. See it. Report it. If you see me, please help me. Call the TIP hotline at 847. Welcome back. The Caribbean region can expect to see exponential growth of small and medium-sized enterprises in the near future. This as more young people are being taught about business ownership for the CARICOM Secretariat's Creativity for Employment and Business Opportunity CBO program. More from Toussaint in English Francis. CARICOM Secretariat 10th EDF Creativity for Employment and Business Opportunity CBO program has been moving apace. So far, youth in Haiti, Jamaica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Belize, have participated in entrepreneurship workshops. The workshop targets young people from all walks of life as a means of countering youth unemployment, mitigating drug abuse, crime and violence, and fostering economic resilience. This phase of implementation also focuses on CARICOM nationals who have faced involuntary separation from other countries. The emphasis on this particular demography is linked to CARICOM Regional Crime Prevention Strategy, which proposes actions to address the determinants of crime, including reintegration of deportees. Deputy Program Manager for Gender and Development at the CARICOM Secretariat, Ms. Anne-Marie Williams spoke about the significance of the workshop at the opening of the session in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Monday the 14th of October. The next round of the workshops will be held in Barbados, Belize, and again in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Prime Minister Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyal. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the NGN Nouvelle Arcoyon. Monsieur, Madame, Department of West Coast Avenue Tape for Information and Gouvernement Citizen GIS. Assembly so Television National Pia NTN. Kabuzato. Novella Quayol. Was it all? Primus Hutchinson. Vice President, DSH, a director for Royal St. Lucia Turf Club in Harrington, declared that the city is going to be a location to be engaged in the project. Déjà, there are 20 contractors and 300 individuals employed in construction in the first phase of the project, and other 50 individuals employé pour occuper ces chevaux là Harrington a ajouté que le 13 décembre 2019, la cette date-là, qui est spectacle qu'au cheval qui a porté nom Peter Club, Peter Cup, qui a expliqué que plus que 200 individus qui ont eu l'occasion pour trouver employment. Il a expliqué aussi que c'est le siège qui a eu l'occasion pour participer à un projet là en tout degré, en capacité de jockey, docteurs animaux et d'aménagement. Le directeur a noté que le club est bien au courant et que la situation concerne des gros problèmes de travail qui ont existé, particulièrement en sous pays. Et que ces gros là ont fait tout ce qui peut pour assister à n'importe façon qui est possible pour courager la situation. Le directeur du club a dit aussi que c'est ici qu'il a trouvé l'occasion pour ni ces chevaux de l'Ouest qui ont fait ça même et qui ont participé à ces courses là aussi. Harrington a expliqué que le programme d'étonnement Winston Trim a produit ces divers étonnements pour les individus qui ont été en à projet ça là. Comme préparation déjà en place pour tenir plusieurs courses de cheval pour l'année 2020, le Premier ministre de l'Union Allen Chasney 
qui a fait un appel pour cette liste engagée pour trouver bénéfice hors de projet salaire. Le Premier ministre Chasney a déclaré que la CAINI l'occasion pour cette liste de travail qu'on a joué. Le Premier ministre a remarqué que avant, si on a tenu la terre pour étonner qu'on a joué, il a tenu pour voyager l'autre pays. Mais à présent, il a fait ça en cette liste même, côté qui a trouvé un dégoût international. Cette liste a expérimenté une grande course internationale à l'industrie de course cheval le 13 décembre de l'année 2019. Et puis, spectacle, Peter Cup. En parlant de ça, directeur des affaires et préparation en gouvernement cette ci Mme Nancy Charles, déclaré que ce cheval Kousla a sorti en plusieurs pays pour participer dans le grand Kousla cette ci Mme Charles parlait concernant le développement de après une grande conférence en vieux fort, mais côté passé, côté Premier ministre Honorable Alan Chasney, avec les officiers de l'ISH qui parlent du projet de l'ISH. Il y a l'Amérique, il y a Babad, il y a Trinidad pour venir faire un coup de cheval en cette liste. Et ce que l'ISH a fait aujourd'hui, il y a ouvert pour les médias, pour venir pour garder la facilité qu'ils ont fait ici. Il y a des stables, il y a des bandes côté ce cheval à l'Ouest. Et puis il y a des um, approprié 25 jeunes nommés madame en cette liste qui ont et tu es né, et puis c'est mon ça qui a point que c'est cheval ça qui est ici. Selon Mme Charles, ça a une occasion pour particulièrement les jeunes en face à tout pays pour prendre l'avantage. Et puis nous avons un chai monde peut-être qui pas été développement ça a été fait, la tenir un chai monde peut-être qui était capable de faire développement. Mais quand nous ici à Jodia, nous avons un chai chai l'argent qui a investi dans le développement. So, un chai c'est business là qui est en sous pays, um, c'est hardware company, c'est côté comme ça, il y a un bénéfice puis il y a gagné tout le matériel de um, ces gens là. Et puis c'est contracteurs vieux fort, les gens qui ont des trucs, les gens qui ont des barcos, les gens qui ont des excavateurs, les jeunes qui ont mis des blocs qui a fait électrique. Tout ce monde en sous pays a ha bénéfice de ce projet, ça a pu se faire un travail pour que ça a construit toute facilité à nous qui sommes ici aujourd'hui. Ce gouvernement est très plein et puis l'employement a créé par un seul jeune monde et puis nous sommes très plein et puis l'opportunité a été présentée par le business en sous pays pour que ça a bénéfice de ce développement. Le grand coup de cheval Peter Cup a été le 13 décembre de l'année 2019. Les gens qui étaient présents pour la grande conférence qui a adressé le projet de l'ISH et le gros coup de cheval à cette ici, c'est un témoignage pour un morceau de sculpture qui a représenté un grand spectacle à cette ici. Cette ici, avec le travailleur de sculpture internationale, Jalim Yudovic, a trouvé l'occasion pour bâtir la sculpture et faire une présentation de la grande conférence là et expliquer qu'il était choisi pour l'eau et l'abri qui se yon bois local qui très belle et qui a porté des couleurs. J'allais me déclarer qu'il a bâti 12 sculptures plutôt qu'à plat. Il y a juste qu'il a bâti l'image là en façon qu'il a abrassé Natal Péya, mais en même temps, il a aussi représenté une image mondiale pour aider le bout à parmi la compétition internationale. Mais en même temps, tout ça, ce cheval là, et ça c'est la raison de la sculpture qui a présenté une tête cheval. Après, il a expliqué l'image là, il a aussi présenté pour tout le monde qui a reçu un bon applaudi. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle là, messieurs, mesdames. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne sais pas encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez présenté une autre nouvelle à Coyol. À présent, je vous remercie pour présenter vous, Michel. Merci, M. Pil Primus. Et ici, nous allons voir ce qui se passe à nous, weather-wise. Fair skies becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers and a chance of thunderstorms. Weak and stable conditions in the atmosphere over the region will cause some showers and possibly isolated thunderstorms over parts of the region during the next 24 hours. The tropical wave, located several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles, has been relocated further east. This wave is expected over the southern portion of the region by late Saturday. A second and third tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic and just off the West African coast are moving westward near 17 miles per hour and 15 miles per hour or 28 and 24 kilometers per hour respectively. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 1.03 p.m. and is low at present. The tide for Vieux Bay was high at 2.10 p.m. 
and will be low at 7.55 p.m. The sea is slight with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0.6 to 1.2 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.56 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.